Hey, how's everyone doing today? This is Josh Noel from Premium B, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to create a parallax photo slide. And here we are inside of After Effects. Before we begin, remember you can download these project files so you can follow along step by step and you can have the project files that we'll be using. And if you're in a time crunch, you can also check out some templates on rocketstock.com like this one, where is this nice parallax photo slide that's gonna be pretty much exactly what we're doing here. So let's go ahead and create a new composition by going up to composition, new composition. And we'll just call this one tutorial main. And I'm using 1920 by 1080, 23.976 frames per second. And we'll just stick with a duration of 15 seconds. We'll click OK. So the first thing we're going to do is bring in a photo. I have this nice landscape photo. Let's drag this right into our timeline. So if you scroll out here, you'll see that the image is bigger than our composition, which is good. We want to be able to have a large image to do this effect on. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up to Layer, New Camera. And I'm using the 50 millimeter preset, and we're going to click OK. And that's okay. Let's go ahead and make this layer a 3D layer. And let's hit P on our keyboard for position for the camera. Let's add a keyframe for the camera here. Let's go to like the end of our animation. Let's say six seconds here. And let's go to the top and let's grab the track Z camera tool. And let's just kind of click in here and kind of scroll this back a little bit. So now we're gonna have this nice dolly out effect. And we're gonna create some a little bit of movement. And let's go to like maybe one second, maybe a second and a half. And let's just kind of really bring some of this image in the full perspective here. So we can kind of have like this quick dolly out animation and then it slows down and it'll continue to just subtly dolly out and let's kind of utilize most of the frame here. There we go. And let's do ourselves a favor by making these last two keyframes easy ease keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. So now we want to start creating some depth and bringing in some other elements to make this look a little bit more three dimensional. So I have some lens dust elements here, which we'll be using. We'll kind of create some like textures and, you know, make it three dimensional. So let's go back into our composition here and let's bring in our first texture. And remember, you can download these project files in the description of the video. So just keep that in mind that you, you can get your hands on these textures. So our image is in here. And what we need to do is make this layer a 3D layer. And we need to toggle switches and modes until we see the blending modes and we need to set this to screen. And as you see, we can see through the darkness of the texture and we have these nice uh, lens dust elements on here. Now the issue is this image is now smaller than our composition, which is not what we want. So we're gonna do a little bit of scaling to make this work out great and a little bit of moving around the position. So let's go to the end of our animation here at six seconds and let's add a keyframe for scale. And let's just scale this up to the exact you know size of our uh, composition here. So we'll do like 150% and we'll go to the beginning of our timeline here and we'll just kind of shrink this down to like maybe 105%. So now we scroll through here. We'll see that maybe the uh, image is cutting it a little bit close here. So just go back to that original keyframe and just move it back up if you see that happening. So maybe we'll do like a 118% or something. So we'll just come through here, scroll through here, make sure everything is looking good. So we got a little bit of movement and let's hit P on our keyboard for position and let's go ahead and bring the Z position into the negative value, maybe like negative 200. So it's gonna be a little bit off the background a little bit and it's gonna have a little bit of a three dimensional look. And what we're gonna do is also alt click the stopwatch and type in wiggle, open parenthesis 0 0.5 comma 20 close parenthesis and I'll zoom in real fast. So wiggle, open parenthesis 0 0.5 comma 20 close parenthesis. And remember to alt click the stopwatch to type that expression in there and click off it when you're done. So there'll be a little bit of like a nice little wiggle animation to it and just creating some more animation and making it look a little bit more three dimensional like it's a separate element from the uh, background. And let's add another texture in here and bring it on the top and see this one's a little bit different. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and set this to screen and make it a three layer as well. And this one, we're really going to shoot this up into 3D space, so like negative uh, maybe 1400 or so. And we'll turn off our background texture real fast, our original texture, and we see that this will be off just by a little bit. Okay, and with this new lens dust element, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna go, go ahead and put this on at like two seconds. So what we'll do is we'll add a keyframe for scale and also add a keyframe for opacity by hitting T on your keyboard. And you can bring up opacity, add a keyframe for that. And we'll go ahead and bring the opacity keyframe forward in time and set it to 0%. So kind of fade in there. 
and we'll go ahead and increase the scale by a little bit, so maybe like 150%, and we'll go forward by a few frames here and set the scale down to 100%, and maybe we'll do a little bit more, maybe we'll do like 60%, nice, and then we'll go to the end of our animation, which is about six seconds, and we'll continue to scale this down by a little bit. If I go ahead and solo this layer, we'll see that the texture will fade on and it will scale down and it'll look nice. So now we have two animated elements in here looking good. And let's go ahead and select our four keyframes right here in the middle. And let's hit F9 on our keyboard to make them easy ease keyframes. So we're rolling along here. Let's go ahead and add our text in here. So what we can do is maybe grab the rectangle tool and just draw out a rectangle box like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and just solo a few of these layers real fast, so a little bit faster. And I'll go ahead and go to the Align tab. If you don't see the Align tab, go up to Window, Align, and let's go ahead and center this up. Okay, so our box is looking nice. Let's grab our text tool here at the top, and let's type out our text. And before we do that, let's set this to just black real fast so we can see our text on top of the white box here. But let's come here and type out our text, which I'll be using the word uh, parallax. And I'm gonna go to our Align tab and center this up in the middle of our composition, as you can see right here, and make some quick changes to our text. Okay, now that our text is centered within our box, what we need to do is toggle switches and modes until we see the track map. And for our box layer here, which is our shape layer, we need to set the track mat to alpha inverted mat. And what's gonna happen, we'll be able to see right through the text. As you see right here, you might wanna make the text a little bit bigger or whatever, depending on your image in the background and the visibility of it. And of course, you can always resize the box if you need to just by bringing in the sides or the top, whatever you need to do to make this work a little bit better. But once you have your text and box in here, you have the alpha inverted map, what we can do is select both of these layers, the text layer and the box layer, go up to layer, pre-compose, and we can call this uh, tutorial title uh, one, and we'll click okay. And now what we can do is toggle switch in modes and make this a 3D layer. So we'll animate with our camera. And what we need to do is hit P on our keyboard for position, and we'll bring this closer to our camera real fast because it's really small since we threw this in 3D space. We might need to, and we might need to put this up to like negative like 2,000 or so. And what we'll do is we'll go to about like say two seconds here, and we'll add a keyframe, and we'll move forward in time maybe by like a second or so. And what we want to do is we want to set this to like negative 4,000 because we want to have this layer come by the camera. So we might do like negative 4,500, and as you can see, it's off. Uh, screen here and what we can do is make this last keyframe an easy ease keyframe and we'll see that the uh, title will fly right by the camera and look nice of course maybe we want to stretch this out a little bit more so we'll have maybe like a, a two second animation or and then what we'll do is go up to layer new adjustment layer and we'll go up to effect distort and we're going to add the optics compensation effect and we'll go to the beginning of our timeline here and let's Add a keyframe for a field of view. Hit U on your keyboard to bring up the keyframes. Move this forward in time to maybe like two seconds or so. And let's add a, let's set this up to like maybe 80 points here. And what's gonna happen, you get this weird distortion, which is not what we want. But once we click the uh, checkbox for lens reverse distortion, and we see that we start to get this wormhole sort of uh, perspective and it's gonna kind of dial down and look nice. And what we'll do is maybe make this an easy ease keyframe. And also, we'll stretch this out to like maybe three seconds as well, just so we can have that wormhole going all the way across there. It looks nice. And now we're looking pretty good here. But let's make a few last adjustments here. Let's go to our lens dust too, and let's hit P on our keyboard for position. And let's add the wiggle expression, which I forgot to do earlier. So we'll do wiggle, open parenthesis, 0.5, comma, 20, close parenthesis. And we'll also go to our background layer here, our photo. And we'll do the same exact thing. We'll add the wiggle position or the wiggle uh, expression to our position. We'll do wiggle open parenthesis 0.5 comma maybe 40 this time and close parenthesis. And that'll just add a little bit of dynamic camera shake to the image. And the one thing we want to do before we move to the next step is we want to make sure that nothing is being undercut uh, into the background because we are animating the Z positions of these layers and layers can easily get in front of each other in 3D space. So just make sure like the parallax isn't going you know, into the image, into your, like, your photo image. And if you need to make any adjustments to this title, uh, let's go back into the position here and let's kind of make this come a little bit closer to us. So maybe we'll do like a negative 2,500 for our title here so we can see it a little bit better. And that should be good. So we made some last second 
uh, fixes. And the last thing we'll do with all these layers is we'll add motion blur for all, each of these layers. And we'll make sure to select all of our layers and go up to layer, pre-compose, and we'll call it slide one and click OK. And now let's say we want to add some additional slides. So we want to have slide two, slide three, and we don't want to have to recreate everything we just did. That's just too much work and we don't need to do that. So what we can do is go to our project window of, up here at the top and we can select the composition slide one and go up to edit, duplicate. And also we go to our tutorial title one and go up to edit, duplicate as well. And what we'll do is we'll bring slide two into here and we'll go to like, I don't know, maybe five seconds, we'll have our new slide come on at five seconds, and we'll do a very quick transition. So we'll do like a pos position transition. We'll add a keyframe for position and move this keyframe forward in time, maybe to like six seconds or so. And we'll just have this one come off screen like so. So now we'll have this very easy animation of the next slide coming in here. But right now we still have the same elements. So let's go ahead and quickly swap it out and make sure to turn on motion blur for the slide two as well. So let's go into slide two. And we need to, one, replace the tutorial title here, uh, our main title here. So what we're going to do is go to our duplicated tutorial title 2 comp. And we're going to make sure in our uh, timeline down here, title tutorial title 1 is selected. And we'll hold down Alt on our keyboard and click and drag the title 2 on top of title 1. And that will completely replace the composition with title 2. So now we can go into title 2 and we can uh, rechange out the text. And we go back into slide two, it will automatically update. And we can also grab like another image and I'll do the same thing. I'll go to photo down here, hold down alt and bring in our new photo. And that'll automatically replace the photo with the same properties and we won't have to redo anything. Of course, when you replace photos, make sure that the resolution is up to what you want. In this case, we might want to do a little bit of scaling on it just to make sure that we have majority of the photo in here. So we'll bring down the scale on this photo just by a little bit. And remember, uh, hit S on your keyboard for scale. Okay, and if we go back to our tutorial comp over here, we'll see that this composition is intact and we still have all this elements in here. If we go back to our first slide in the timeline, we still have our original edit. So we are looking good. Okay, so we are wrapping this up. Make sure to turn on motion blur at the top and that will affect all the other layers of the motion blur and you can go ahead and render it out. And after a render, this is what we have. And we have this nice parallax effect going on here. We got a lot of movement and we're able to show off our information, have this nice uh, parallax effect. So, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. For more tutorials, please be sure to check out our blog at premiumbeat.com. And if you're in the need for royalty free music, we have a huge library full of great music for your projects. And once again, thank you for watching this video. And this has been Joshua Noel from premiumbeat.com.